All right, I'm really excited today because we're going to talk about a couple things that you can do with your hands and wrists that will either help you hit the ball farther or help you hit the ball more consistently straighter. And they are really integral because each one works with the other. You notice I've got a couple swing trainers here, right? This one has, has been around for a long time. It's one of my favorite ones. It's called the Swing Guide, right? And this is one of these new ones that kind of gets a good sense of what we're doing with our right hand and our trail wrist. And I know we've all done things with our wrist. We've tried to hinge our wrist more. Uh, we've tried to not use our wrist. We've tried to be like the waiter holding a tray at the top. We've tried to hold this angle coming through. But what exactly do we need to do? Okay, and you know, just take a look at some of these graphs here. You'll notice I'll put them up there. This is the trail wrist graph, right? My, 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 my trail wrist, my right hand. And notice how active it is from address to the top. This is measuring how much my trail wrist is flexing on the backswing, and it's doing it a lot. But then take a look at the lead wrist. The lead wrist is much more quiet and steady. Okay, so the way I want you guys to think about this is if you need some more power, and I see this so often in my students, they're usually not loading their trail wrist correctly or enough. Like if I was gonna throw a ball, if I was gonna do anything really athletically, I need to get some bend in this trail wrist. So I see many of my golfers that would actually, you know, they're, they're lacking distance. They would be doing the lead wrist correctly, like getting it into the swing guide. You notice how I can get it into this swing guide just totally fine, but then I'm not touching this little uh, doohickey on my right wrist, right? I'm not touching that cuff at all. Okay, so that would allow me to maybe hit the ball relatively straight, but it's gonna lack a lot of distance because one of the biggest power sources in the golf swing is this right wrist unhinging. That's what we see over here on that impact side of why that line is going down so quickly to impact because there is a lot of things going on with that right wrist. Right now, if you're one of those players that, okay, maybe I hit the ball farther, but I'm lacking in consistency, a lot of times it's because your lead wrist is not stable and passive in the backswing. So what that means is like, you notice the amount of extension that I have here in my lead wrist, maybe 20, 25 degrees to start. We need to kind of keep that amount as we go up to set the club at the top. Where players that are really having a lot of inconsistencies, this angle is changing quite a bit. So by the, by the time they get to the top, they look more like this, or a lot of times they look more like this, and you can see the swing guide is on different areas, right? The swing guide is over here, or the swing guide is over here. We want to be able to just, just as in like an inline condition, it's just gonna go straight up into this lead wrist. But here's the magic. The lead wrist is going up in this vertical fashion, and then the trail wrist is bending back on itself. So you notice kind of what the best players in the world are able to do in order to get both power and accuracy. Their lead wrist is nice and stable, and then their trail wrist is bent back on itself. So you see when they get to the top, they have this classic looking position at the top. Here's a couple variations of some bad ones. Here's one where I get it into the lead, but you see my trail wrist is not touching that, that cuff at the top. A position doesn't look too bad, but trust me, there is no power here. This would be like if I try to throw a ball like this, I would probably end up throwing it into the ground, right? There's no bend to this wrist at all. And no matter how hard we turn our body and work, if this thing is not gonna let go at some point, we're not gonna get much power, okay? So what I see a lot of other players do is they bend this right away and you can see that this swing guide is nowhere near pointing at my lead forearm. So they do a lot of this, and then at just at some point, the lead wrist is all over the map with going from flexion back into extension. They get some elbows bending at the top. And this is somebody who can probably generate some club head speed, but the ball is just gonna be wildly offline. So if you're that person, you can kind of rehearse, okay, so I know I'm getting into my trail wrist at the top, but let's see if I can kind of quietly get this into the swing guide at the top here to where I'm not causing a lot of havoc and a lot of inconsistency with what my wrist is doing, you know, say in the latter half of the backswing. Hey, it's your coach Zach Allen here. And when it comes to the golf swing, I've seen and tried it all, but nothing has proven as effective as the concept I'm about to share with you now. It is the single most powerful piece of golfing advice I've ever come across. In fact, I would go so far as to call it a magic move. Since I don't have the time in this short video, I've put together a three-part web class where I teach you exactly how to put it to use in your game. Nothing held back. 
I call it my Magic Move Training Series, and you can get the entire thing free of charge by clicking the link in the description below. You won't find these videos anywhere else, so go ahead, click the link right now, and I'll send you the first session right away. Okay, let's go ahead and get back to that lesson. But I find it really interesting there, you know, as you look at both hands, they both kind of have a role in what they're supposed to do and what they're not supposed to do. Okay, so if you guys like any of these, any of these, I'll, I'll put some links down in there below if you want to buy, you know, these things cost like seven or eight bucks. They're super cheap. This one's a little bit more expensive, but they can definitely help you figure out your risk conditions, right? A lot of times that's the lowest hanging fruit in terms of getting better quickly is just knowing what and what we're not supposed to do with our hands and wrists rather than trying to do big things with the body parts. That doesn't always lead to you hitting the ball better the fastest, okay? So um, take a look at some of your wrist conditions, videotape your golf swing, see what you see, see if you can figure out definitely ways to maybe hit, some, hit, hit it farther and get more power if you're lacking some of this. And then if you're lacking a little bit of this stability, right, and consistently doing that, see if that doesn't help you hit the golf ball straighter. If my videos have ever helped you in the past, please leave a comment, right, let me know. Feel free to like or subscribe, obviously, that really helps the momentum and helps the flow of the channel to where more people will see and hear about it. But also, if you have any more questions about what the hands and wrists are doing, I've got a couple different video choices, both here and here, these videos will definitely kind of guide you in the right direction about a little more information about how to really master and educate your hands and wrists so they don't master you. All right, have a great day and I'll see you next video.